This is Mile High. Do I want to tell the story or do I want to show the message? You've got a lot of work to do between Mile High. The time has come where we can know. We have a responsibility, an ethical and moral responsibility. We have to do it better in order to move people along. Up, down, inside out. If you get your mind right, it is not. It is a receiver of thought. This love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us. We are grateful to have you here, and we would like you to never miss any Mile High tick. So make sure if you're watching this or listening to this, whether it be on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or any of the other channels, that you hit subscribe so you never miss any Mile High chiropractic. And you certainly want to remember to be at Mile High August 20th to 23rd. Um, www.milehigh2020.com is where to get all the details on that. We're six months away and you want to rise up before the next rate rise, which is March 31st. So be there. It is the center, uh, center place of chiropractic for our programs. And we look forward to seeing you rise up. Now today, I will tell you, I am very thrilled. I, I always think it's very special when we have on our podcast a Mile High chiropractor, a Colorado chiropractor. And um, <laughs> Dr. Petra um, Solwood and her husband, Clayton, are really such wonderful souls and um, just personally, but also incredible servants to chiropractic, to principal, uh, to the principal, to four-legged creatures, um, and also to two-legged humans <laughs> um, <laughs> in, their, in their practice down, down near Durango in Mancos. Um, she's the owner of Mancos Chiropractic. She's certified by the International Veterinary Chiropractic Association. She's an animal chiropractor. She's been um, instrumental in changing the law in Colorado relative or influencing the law in Colorado around to animal chiropractic. So I'm sure we're going to talk about mm -hmm. that. Um, so welcome, welcome to the uh, Mile High Podcast, Dr. Petra. Thank you, Danny. It's so great to be on this. Thank you. Well, I am grateful to have you here. You and your hubby are just such wonderful people. So, um, and we're, we're, I'm grateful every time we get to connect with you, especially on this topic. Oh, thank you. And I do have to say, we already got our tickets and we can't wait to be at Mile High. Yay! And I think one of the biggest things is I just want to give a shout out because, you know, we're family in chiropractic and to make sure that everything stays as amazing and good as it is, we got to be all at Mile High and support each other. I, gotta uh, I agree. And, and, you know, that's in my vision. I'm glad you said that is about the support each other. And that, you know, we're all in this together. And if we're especially, I mean, I know so many people fly from overseas and from out of state to Colorado for Mile High. But really, I want us as, a, as Colorado chiropractors to influence our state. And being able to time to connect uh, helps us create community so we can you know, impact the profession for the better. I mean, I know you feel the same way. Absolutely. Yeah. So now a lot of people um, know you and a lot of people may not know you. So let's start out with simple, letting people get to know you. How did you find your way into chiropractic and maybe how you and Clayton got together? <laughs> That's a very personal question. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, was, uh, I came from Austria when I was 19 and, and uh, you know, I started business, all this stuff. And I knew I always had a very deep connection to horses and it was a horse that kind of led me into the right direction. I was searching at the time and uh, I had a very difficult horse. He was rescued and the chiropractor came out and adjusted him and not knowing anything about what chiropractic was, not understanding the philosophy, nothing. Uh, what really blew my mind was not so much the muscular skeletal changes this horse had, but the emotional mental changes. I suddenly had an animal that was willing to show up and work with me instead of trying to bite and kick and be miserable. And that was it. That I think literally a week later I signed up. Um, I went to Life West. So a week later and I was in California. So I signed up and I just purely went to human chiropractic school to be able to be an animal chiropractor. And then along the way, I kind of thought that, you know, human adjusting wasn't that bad either. <laughs> 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 and, um, 
Yeah, and Clay and I, we actually were in school together and we graduated, we totally parted ways. We had a common connection, which was Dr. Jacob Merrick and Mimi Chatwood. They were really dear friends and mentors of ours. And lo and behold, uh, Clay ended up buying their practice in Durango. And, uh, you know, after graduating a year after, I visited there and they asked me if I wanted to find us a partner. So Clayton and I were actually business partners for a while. And then things changed. <laughs> yeah, well, very cool. Very cool. Well, and, and I did not realize that you knew each other in school. I just knew you knew, yep. knew in the Durango side of the of the state. So that's very cool. And, yep. and actually, let's say one more thing about, about Clay before we focus on you. He has this um, new torque and toggle. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Can you say yeah. something about that? Because I think we would be remiss not to. Well, so um, if you're familiar, there used to be a torque and toggle. It was made long time ago. Yep. And then no, and it was, uh, it was, oh, there we go. So yep. it was an amazing training tool for chiropractors, especially when it comes to torque, hence the word torque. <laughs> and he, it was, it was kind of a life passion. He got really into upper cervical and he had always this vision. He wanted to develop the torque and toggle and he dedicated last year and a significant part of our savings to <laughs> creating this uh, torque and toggle. And it's, it's beautiful. And he has almost sold out the first batch and uh, absolutely incredible training device, especially if you're in upper cervical care, if you do anything, you know, um, knee chest, upper cervical, et cetera, anything that requires torque, but I even use it. It's a great device for animal chiropractors too. And um, it's made in the U S it's pretty awesome. Torque and toggle.com. You can check yeah. it out. Okay, I was going to ask you URL. So, torquentoggle.com. Yeah. People ask all the time how they can learn upper cervical, where they can learn it, and how could they practice. So, mm -hmm. I cannot say enough. This would be uh, a great place to start, as well as yes. obviously training, but as a as a resource tool. Um, I, I cannot emphasize enough. We'll actually put that in the in the links with the, oh, cool. with the podcast too. I think that would be a good thing to do. So now, something that I I did not know um, about, which is, um, I know very little about the history of um, animal chiropractic or chiropractors taking care of animals. Um, did Dee did Dee Palmer take care of animals in, in any kind of way? I have no idea. Can you enlighten us? Oh gosh, you just, you just asked my favorite question in the world. <laughs> I have been, I, it's become such a passion. I actually went to Palmer to the archives and dug deep. And the stuff I found just, it was so educational because you look on the animal chiropractic, but you find all this other amazing research that you wouldn't hear about if you're just a human chiropractor. And it's pretty amazing. Didi Palma actually mentions animal chiropractic the very first time in 1810. Okay. He had a broadsheet. A broadsheet, it's, it's kind of like this um, newspaper. And his broadsheet was called... 1910. I'm sorry. What year do you, what year? Oh, 1910. Sorry. What did I say? Yeah. yeah. What did I say? 1810. It was <laughs> oh, not oh no. <laughs> I guess a historian here. And anyways, in his broadsheet, um, it's, uh, you know, he would explain chiropractic. He would talk about cases. So if somebody would ask him, hey, I'm interested in like learning what you're teaching, where can I find more about it? He would say, oh, just take my broadsheet. It's called the chiropractic. And uh, he mentions uh, animal chiropractic about it. And it basically, I'm going to ha have a little cheat sheet here. Please, please, yes. he, he basically talks about that, um, you know, chiropractic is good for horses. And he also, the, the interesting part is he just kind of nudges the veterinarians. He says, hey, stop with the cruel treatment of animals if you care. Um, start looking into chiropractic because the methods at this time were pretty crude. And uh, so it gives them a nice little nudge. But what I thought was also really interesting was that um, when you looked at his broadsheet, which I would have never read unless I was looking for something animal, yeah. you saw all these case studies and every, all of those little case studies that he mentioned or, or little tidbits of people healing, were, there was nothing musculoskeletal. It was pretty much all somatovisceral. And right next to the one about the animal was a big thing, oh, this guy came in, he had this big lump of cancer on his nose. And after a couple of adjustments, it basically fell off. Yeah. So, you know, it was just such a great reminder of what uh, mindset they were at at that time. You yes. know, they just they had such a deep faith and passion for chiropractic. Uh, it was quite incredible. 
And the other part that I thought was kind of fun to see at this broadsheet is, you know, BJ Palmer was such a collector of things yeah. different. And well, DD has a big advertising museum with this big set of antlers. And he's basically inviting people to see the largest collection of animal he heads at his house. So he, you know, now you know where BJ Palmer kind of got it from too. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that was the first mentioning. And then um, as you go through the times and the green books and some of the speeches of the Lyceum, B.J. Palmer refers to that his dad and him at some point actually ran what they call somewhat of a, of a chiropractic animal hospital. Now, there aren't very, very detailed records, but he mentions it in his speeches. And he said, you know, they were really interested in pedigree animals. So they would adjust like pedigree bulls and, and pedigree dogs. So and very high level, properly bred animals. That's really what they were interested in. And he uh, talks about uh, this bull that was bullying and they went out, he got adjusted and then the bull was bullying again. So voila, the world got saved. And, uh, uh, and, and then as you keep on going, you know, he always, he always nudges, even in, in one of his green books, he mentions, you know, um, chiropractic is so incredible for humans why why would the animal be different and he keeps on nudging people and you'll see even in the fountainhead news there'll be little stories of uh, people adjusting like mules and 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 horses and then you know now we're going a little bit into the political direction then you hear suddenly the ama completely freaking out oh, wow. <laughs> really? around when was that do you know uh yes actually no so when um in, in uh, uh, 1918, in the Fountainhead News, uh, okay. they, they started talking about, um, you know, that there's three examples of basically some of the doctors adjusting the animals. And, the, and that's also when the AMR, and actually 1921 is when the AMA kind of recounts the stories that, Didi, that BJ Palmer was telling about the animals. And they're, they're basically warning chiropractors to stop adjusting animals. Uh -huh. And they are ugly, what they're writing. They call chiropractic basically spasmodic jarring. And oh my goodness, not only are they touching humans, but now the poor, helpless animals are getting jarred. And poor, the, helpless oh, animals. Yeah, exactly. And they call chiropractic a popular fad. If chiropractors are wise, they will confine a malpractice to humans. So, you know, there's certain parts of this country where not much has changed. Maybe we're a little bit more eloquent with our words. Yeah. But um, when you really, I mean, this goes on and on. And I think part of why BJ Palma and Didi didn't publicize um, the animal chiropractic as much as they did human chiropractic is they already had a huge battle to fight in the human world. And I don't think that taking it on from both, you know, for the animals and the humans, I cannot even imagine mm -hmm. if that would have been a possibility. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Really, yeah. really amazing. And, and it's so cool to hear that there's that long history. I had no idea. Um, yeah, isn't it? So, so, so Dee Dee was actually taking care of, anim of, of animals at that point. Yeah, he totally was. And I do have to give one correction, which I apologize. I just saw in my notes, the chiropractic, that was actually in 1899. Okay, wow. So when he mentions it for the first time. So yes, he did. And, you know, one of the things is, um, uh, I, I, I'm going to go back to Palmer and dig deeper and hopefully I can actually find some more, some more in-depth information where you actually find him saying something, how he's adjusting, et cetera. So... Wow, that's, that's very exciting, very, very interesting. Um, so now also, since you um, mentioned politics, let's talk about that because that's been, so we hear like it's been a political history since, a political cha you know, challenge probably since chiropractic has been around, okay, like, like the rest of our areas of our profession. So what has been the history of the politics of, well, uh, and not necessarily co Colorado at this point, but just with chiropractors having rights as compared to veterinary uh, rights in terms of that? Oh boy, we're opening a Pandora's box yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very political about this. Okay. Uh, so this, this is the fact where we are at right now. 
and it's it's actually very concerning to me. Uh, at this, the history is there's been um, not a lot in the law in terms of who gets to adjust the animal. Is it the vet or is it the chiropractor, okay. and who's more fit? So this has been an ongoing battle since the Diploma B Diploma times. Nationwide, right? Nationwide, so, yeah. worldwide. Okay. Yeah worldwide to the point right. where the problem at this point is that suddenly um you know and i can't blame it veterinarians are falling in love with chiropractic they think it's amazing they can see they totally see the benefits i've met some veterinarians that probably are more principled and more passionate about chiropractic than some of my uh, fellow colleagues but the issue is there's a huge when you watch um everybody adjusts so there's veterinarians and chiropractors both can go to animal chiropractic schools but veterinarians can really do whatever they want they can adjust whether they have gone to school or not because that's just in their loss they can do whatever they want with animals and it's a little disconcerting and uh, when we look at colorado we basically our state we were supposed to get a written veterinary clearance to adjust a lot of states now have chiropractors have to be under direct uh, veterinary supervision or the need to or they can't adjust animals at all and the reality is if you ask me personally uh, you know you you ask yourself like well you know as chiropractors we've been trained for three to four years palpating feeling a spine getting to feel what it is like to adjust whereas a veterinarian you know goes to a 210 our course and they don't ever have to do continuing ed education unless they want to whereas we have to and that just doesn't seem quite enough for me to feel what you know like how how do they know what a subluxation is how can they really feel it and can they really truly adjust it you know if they take it upon themselves to learn possibly absolutely mm -hmm. but um at this point in time there's four states only in the u.s that allow direct access to animals and i think that's a huge problem and colorado is one of them i would them. say it's a real problem and so yeah. four states which are, what are the four states um oh gosh you're asking me quick it's i think it's colorado uh if i'm not hey, mistaken colorado. i know yeah colorado ohio and the other two honestly i would have to look up right now i just had them on the agenda and i can get back to you on that i don't want to lie okay, right now we can put it in our notes for the podcast okay people. perfect um, yeah so so here's something and 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 to delve deeper on this that i think is important philosophically um and please correct me or redirect me because it's not an area i'm very knowledgeable for so i'm really grateful for the education personally but also for our viewers listeners so yes. here's the thing when i think chiropractic for an animal or physical therapist taking care of i mean a veterinary probably a veterinary taking care of an animal i yeah. think chiropractic and i think nerve system and yes. I think subluxation and yes. then i think a veterinarian taking care of an animal overall i'm thinking they're thinking more physical therapy and joints so yes can you speak to that a little bit <laughs> yes so and i think that is that is exactly where uh it gets so tricky because i will have i actually have very close veterinary friends that are chiropractors they're very passionate they love it and yes it's it's a joint mobilization and there's the thing about it is you know principle number six there's no process that does not require time right to really uh the problem is the owners a lot of times will push you to fix something now mm -hmm. and as a veterinarian you kind of expect it to give the magic pill and you can't even blame the veterinarian for it right but this is the mindset okay so this joint is maybe like in their terminology locked up, you know, they're adjusted. It's not changing. Oh, let's throw some acupuncture in it with it, or let's put right. some meds with it too. So well, because it's a treatment model. I mean, that's exactly. what you anticipate from any allopathic profession and veterinarian for the most part is going to be an allopathic profession. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, there's a really, and I don't want to totally um, talk bad about them all because there's some that are just craving that philosophy that we have but the majority isn't and mm -hmm. it's a treatment model and the thing what got me when we had our meeting um, you know where we came every month up to Denver and there were uh, two uh, animal veterinary animal chiropractors there and that's when it really hit me because I think I was really open to you know let's include everyone and just be open-minded but a certified animal chiropractor that was a veterinarian 
he basically wanted to have a differential diagnosis list. And the, the top thing that he listed was degenerative disc disease. So he basically wanted to say, uh, chiropractors shouldn't be touching a horse that has anything with degenerative disc disease. And that made me realize the lack of understanding of what mm. chiropractic does. And, you know, like, and then the list got bigger and bigger. And fortunately, we never, that list never went through. But it really, it made me realize there's such a deep lack of understanding what chiropractic is and does. And, you know, you got to have faith. You got to have time. You got to know what you're doing. And I don't know if that can be bridged by just putting them in a 210 hour program. Right. And unless they're just so motivated and they, they have that craving for philosophy, but it's, it's very little philosophy that's being taught. And the, the, the thing is like, even what they're doing, they can see a difference with the horses because chiropractic is so incredible. But uh, over time, if the veterinary world takes it over, I truly feel it's just going to be watered down and watered down to the point where it's not going to be chiropractic anymore. Well, so, and again, I'll ask more questions about this and please feel free, as I said, to correct me or redirect me because this yes. is not my area of knowledge. When I think of that and you say there's such a misunderstanding, I would think that there's so much understanding relative to humans that yeah. there's even more misunderstanding when you get to animals because- Oh gosh, yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and I don't think necessarily, I, I definitely don't think, well, if a veterinarian, non-chiropractor wants to take care of an animal and they're treating an animal with the intention of an allopathic attention, they're going to throw different therapies at it because that's their objective. Yeah. That's just different than chiropractic. It is 100% different. And I think, you know, to the point where um, a lot of times they call it veterinary manipulation. And I'm like, yeah, that's a lot more proper. And they can have that term. And we should keep animal chiropractic animal adjusting. Because, you know, that's, that's exactly it. They manipulate, we adjust. So to it, it the the even with the best intention and a veterinarian that wants to do chiropractic that they will never get it on the level that a principal chiropractor will get it right. and and that's what really worries me in the fact that that these veterinarians are the ones that I have to ask for a, 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 a clearance or be supervised it's it poses a huge problem and you know I keep on nudging people in different states and I talk, you know, probably every week I talk to a different state where people will call, well, you know, what should we do? And I'm like, well, it's time to be proactive. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's just, it's like, we need to, you know, I, and I, and I send it to you, you know, BJ's last word is like, we need to protect what's ours and animal chiropractic is ours. Veterinary manipulation can be theirs, but animal chiropractic is ours. Well, and absolutely. And, and there's something important to say there because people tend to mind their own backyard. They tend to mind what's closest to them. If it doesn't bother them, they don't take action. Like if it doesn't affect my practice, I may not do anything. That's a kind yeah. of apathetic thing. So here's the thing, what you just said about losing this relative to um, our four-legged friends and, and other and, and all species, right? That yeah. like, oh, if they take it over, it's really bad. There's a precedent. If that happens with animals, yes, I think the medical profession will then say, Hey, look, this is what it says relative to animals. It's why would it be different with humans? Absolutely, absolutely, because it's, it's, it's the same model. And I mean, you've been there, you know, oh, just look I, at the AMA, right? Right. So yeah. it's like it took a person, you know, to stand up and lose his family, and I don't know how much money, right? But, um, you know, he did, he did it and he stood up to the AMA and, it's, and, and that's the whole thing. We need to do that with animal chiropractic because it can affect the human world as well. But right. a, lot of thing, a lot of people don't think that far. Right. And, and, you know, part of it too is, and I think that's why I love it. Every year I'm like, okay, I'm done with adjusting humans. I'm just going to focus on animals. But the reality is like, once you adjust an animal and the owner sees, because it doesn't take any words. When a, when a person sees an animal get adjusted, they get chiropractic. You don't have to say a word mm -hmm. because there's so there's the mental stuff's not in the way The the results are actually immediate 
a lot of times with animals and, and animal owners will look at that and they will become your most loyal patients for the rest of their lives with their entire family. So I sometimes laugh because the animals sent me more patients than I'll be ever able to handle. Mm -hmm. And to lose that part, it would be such a pity because not only would we lose you know, adjusting animals, but we would lose like true chiropractic if uh, the veterinary world would take it over. Right, right. Well, absolutely. And um, I want to ask you about what happened in Colorado because you and a few other people were instrumental in that. Before I ask about that, though, um, can you share? I know that you're involved with teaching and people want to learn. How, I mean, people ask me all the time, how can I learn to take care of animals? You have, tell, tell us about how people can do that. I know you have something coming up in the Colorado area in May. Uh, tell us more about teaching overall and what you have going on. Oh, cool. So I think the first thing I want to say is, you know, sometimes people don't want to get certified because it, it is a pain. And, uh, but the reality is like, you can't help politically if you don't get certified. So it's really important that people that want to get, um, that want to get into animal adjusting, just get your animal certification. There's a bunch of schools out there. Uh, but then uh, if you really want to learn a whole other level of adjusting, we have uh, Dr. Jacob Merrick, Clay, and there's a couple of other people we've teamed up and we're teaching some amazing advanced animal chiropractic classes. And a lot of them are right here in Mancus. And um, we even have a horse brain dissection. We have a neurologist come in. It is, it, we just had our first tryout class in December and we have people coming from England and Finland and, it was amazing and it's truly hands-on. It's a level of adjusting and, and philosophy and history um, that I don't think you can find anywhere else. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's that's, exciting. We're gonna do more of that. It's really exciting. So now you're, what, what's the web URL and what's your next program? So right now our official, uh, because we just started it, so we don't have a, a super official website yet, but go to Equus Chiropractic, E-Q-U-U-S Chiropractic.com and go to seminar and events. Um, and that will list all the seminars that are coming up. The next one, uh, it, it's only for certified animal chiropractors. Uh, so you have had to have some experience in a program. Uh, it's going to be May, end of May. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very excited. And we'll put the date, we'll put all the information, we'll put the links in this awesome. so people will be able to see that. Um, you mentioned Dr. Yeah. Jake Kamarik, who we love yes. and appreciate. Um, big, he's a big fan of Mile High and we're a big fan of him. Um, yep. tell, tell us about his, or his participation in this. So uh, Jay and I, we used to work together when I first got out of school. Well, he actually was my mentor during school. We worked together at the Cafe of Life in Durango for several years, and then we kind of went our own ways, and now we've come full circle. And actually, Danny, it was at the last mile high. Oh, really? Yes. I, I, now it just totally blows my mind talking to you. Uh, we sat down, and we started talking about our vision, and people kept on coming up, and they're like, when are you guys starting a school? And <laughs> no, it's, it's really, and, and, and we always like, oh, if you start a real school, there's just so many limitations, and we don't want to lose the philosophy and, you know, the juiciness of what it is really about. Right. So we said, let's do some advanced programs, and um, it was just, you know, we just mentioned it while we were sitting there and at the hotel at Mile High, and we were chatting, and... Next thing we know, um, a month later, Jay moved down to Mancus and now he has his own little place and we've just teamed up and we're creating lots of amazing classes and we'll see where it takes us well, all. That's really exciting. And, and, yeah. and I'll say something about that relative to Mile High. Like we, we put on a great program. I think a stellar yes. program. I think the speakers are great and we really push like, you know, uplifting uh, the, the, the principal. I think... Even my personal view, even more so than that, the connections, the conversations that happen a mile high, like what you just said, are just as maybe more important. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I, that's one of the things I absolutely love about it, is that we get to come together. Yes, I so agree. And, you know, uh, Right then and there, uh, there was two other awesome chiropractors, Scott Little, Ryan Marchman. Yes, yes. And they just, you know, they came down and, and they took the class and that all, all those connections happened at Mile High. It was so, right. it was so incredible. And they've become such dear friends and, you know, they're go-getters and they're creating programs. So, so if people are listening to this or watching this, just realize that 
if you have Petra and Clayton, Jay Kamarik, Scott Little, who I love and appreciate, and, and, and also Ryan Marchman, who I love, is my neighbor, right? What? You know, all in one place, and you're interested in animal chiropractic, like Mile High is a place to be that you can connect with those people. Like, yes, yes go there because you want to see speaker, whoever it is. Um, but those connections in person are so valuable. You don't know what relationship that I sometimes I've been at things and I learn more like having a conversation in the bar with someone <laughs> that yeah. makes a bigger impact. That's how life works. So yeah. it's a great opportunity for that, in my opinion. Um, totally agree. Yeah. So so now with this, before we uh, change subject, with because mm -hmm. you're talking about Dr. Dr. Jay Kamarik, now his movie life adjusted did you have any part to play with that I, I, I mean i have no idea yeah i was uh clay and i were co-producers and okay. um clay and i are both in it and my pot belly pig nana and my two mustangs are in it i didn't even realize that well there you go <laughs> very cool very cool well what was it like to work on that uh, say it again what was it like to work on that oh my gosh it was so it was really fun it was um uh, you know, first it, it was one of those things because you're in the back scenes and, you know, we were, I remember we were looking for the special case and we were brainstorming and, and Sean Nipper and, and Casey, they both came right. to our farm at the time in Durango mm -hmm. and, you know, we just started filming and I had just adopted those completely uh, out of the wild Mustangs. And so I was like, well, one of the things we could do is just have Jay adjust those two because I don't want to get kicked. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, and it, it it was really fun, um, you know, being part of it, and all went so beautifully. And um, and then you know, obviously Dizzy, um, Sean Nipper is the one who found the horse Dizzy. But it was interesting, like we just we were waiting for the special horse to show up, and sure enough, uh, it did. It was just complete divine intervention, and it was so okay. fun all hanging out together. Love that. Now, 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 transitioning. We know in the last couple of years, I don't remember what year it was. You can enlighten us. Um, there really was a threat to animal chiropractic in Colorado. And I know several people were very involved, yourself, Jay, um, Paige Mott, um, yes. other people were very involved. I'm sure you can name more, but tell us about what was going on and, and, and so we can learn from it for other, other, other jurisdictions. Um, yes, yeah, so the, in Colorado, the law was that you needed a written veterinary referral before you could ever see an animal, which basically meant that the owner had to go pay for a vet, examine the dog, say yes or no chiropractic, which most vets in my area, I was pretty lucky. Uh, the veterinarians were very open and they were actually bothered by me having to ask them to do that. But, you know, if you look at where Paige is, she's um, in the uh, University of Colorado land, where the vet school is, uh, she would get a lot of, of stamps that said denied. And um, it was really unfair to the animal. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, more and more chiropractors saw the problem in this. And then, you know, cases came up at the board. And, you know, we even were invited <laughs> lovingly to the board, <laughs> which meant that, uh, you know, we got seasoned desists. And uh, that's really what woke us up. We're like, wow, you know, there's, there could be the potential of animal chiropractic being taken away from us. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. And, yeah, and, and, and I love that because I have been thinking about it and there's so many venues, you know, do you hire a lawyer? Do you do a lawsuit? Do you do a bill? Like, what's the best way? And we kind of, you know, I don't think it was mistakes, but uh, we basically, we learned a lot and I have to give a lot of credit to Paige Mott, Dr. Paige Mott, because she literally one day just walked across the hall and found Senator Marble and she's like, hey, this is going on. And Senator Marble was a rock star. She's like, yes, let's write a bill. The bill wasn't perfect and it didn't pass the first time. They basically... Um, sent us to sit down with the Colorado Veterinary Medical Association. And they uh, actually appointed the Colorado Chiropractic Association to represent us, which at first worried us because they knew nothing about animal chiropractic. Uh, but it also nudged us to join the CCA and I'm really glad we did. And no matter if you like the CCA or not, they stepped up in a huge way. That's Their cool. lobbyist was out of this world. And all I can say is, whether you like politics or not, if you're not part of the CCA, they're going to do what they, whatever the majority represents to them. Right. Right. And, you know, Absolutely. yeah. 
So I am Rachel Went. She's become such a dear friend. Mm -hmm. And she's so supportive of our continuing education classes with the animal chiropractic. And she does research. She's incredible. So yes, um, she's, she's incredible. I really yeah, appreciate her. Exactly. And I'm like, you know, I don't make any money on this, but I'm like, you gotta join your chiropractic association. Otherwise, don't complain, don't say anything. <laughs> well, here's the thing. When, uh, and there's a couple things you said that I want to reflect back that are super important. When I was in school, uh, uh, but I'll say this first, when I was in school, there's a sentence, something that Tom Gilardi said at one assembly um, at Sherman, where he said, your association dues, national and state, are your rent. You have to pay them just like your rent. And if you choose not to do that and choose not to be involved, then you will see chiropractic go the direction it goes. Now, in our state, and other states are different, um, in our state, there's one state organization at this point. There were time, one time there was three. Yeah. I ran one of them for years. You know, in <laughs> other states, there are two or three or there's one. But if there's one, it means it's a majority rule. And if you want to impact chiropractic, then you have to get that majority towards you know, reflecting, you know, we all do that because we want to do that as a disservice to our fellow chiropractors. That's not the intention. But if we're, we're in that one tent together, then we have to make sure our voice is heard versus, oh, I don't even want to be a member. So, I mean, I'm a big proponent of people mem being members of your state organization, wherever you are, because otherwise, yeah. you know, you get what you, you'll, you'll get what you get, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And you know, that was one of the things, the first thing I did, I made all, all the animal chiropractors that wanted to be involved. Their prerequisite was basically, you got to join the CCA because they're representing us. And the, the great thing was, is when, you know, we, we approached him and said, we would like to be kind of on the committee because we know animal chiropractic. Right, right. They were incredible. They're like, yeah. So, yeah. you know, Dr. Page, me, Dr. Clayton and uh, Dr. Chrissy, uh, we were just kind of the core group, and, and it was so, I think, gosh. I mean, our lobbyists uh, definitely kept our female emotions under control <laughs> because he got a little heated at times. I'm forever grateful for him, <laughs> and probably my husband, too. <laughs> well, and, and, and here's the thing. Going back to what you said, this is vital. Think about it. This is animal chiropractic at some point being controlled by another profession. You have to get a referral to be able to see the animal. If that is happening in the human level, think about that. If chiropractic was controlled by another profession, whatever profession it was, and you have to get a referral. I mean, there are chiropractors that have wanted that because for some reason they want insurance benefits or other things, but yeah. just, you don't want to, that you, I mean, we've already lost so much chiropractic in terms of our philosophy values. Um, and, and, and we don't want to be, we, you need to be separate and distinct. Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. No mix mash. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much for all you have done in our state and also to help uh, animal chiropractic around the world and also help feed people's skills. Are there any final things that you want to share with people? Um, yeah, I think the last thing uh, I want to say is, you know, one of the big things I've learned is there's, there's two parts of it. One is, um, you know, if you're passionate about chiropractic, if you really believe in what you do, it's important that you get involved and that you just don't stay tucked away. Because it's easy for me, even I'm in the middle of nowhere. And it's so much nicer sometimes to just be at my ranch and not worry about politics. But if you're passionate about something, you got to be proactive. And I think yep. especially the other states, I want to give you a nudge. You can always reach out to me, especially if you're an animal chiropractor. I'm always there and you can always holler. And, you know, I said my, one of my favorite quotes is like, go confidently into the directions of your dreams and things are just going to unfold. So whether that's chiropractically or life dreams or what you want to be able to do, just, you know, stay strong, do that and surround yourself with people that nourish your soul and your mind that you enjoy being around. And I hope I'm going to see you guys all at the next mile high. I hope we see you too. And we're excited to see you and your hubby um, and Jay. And, and here's the thing. That's, Go boldly in the direction that you want. And chiropractic, so often people in the profession have held back, have muted, um, yep. and not shouted what chiropractic is strongly or mile high. We're all about people doing that. 
um, as chiropractors to be stronger in your voice. And yes, stronger in your voice for animal chiropractic as well, clearly. Um, so thank you so much for all you've done and given. Uh, thank you for listening to the Mile High podcast. Um, we, will t- we will have, as I said, in the notes, if you're listening or watching this, the link to Dr. Dr. Petra's program. May is around the corner, so um, great time to up your skills for advanced chiropractic training. Um, I, I, w- I couldn't think of better people to learn from. And certainly dial in being at Mile High in August, August 20th to 23rd, 2020, 2020. <laughs> it's all there. It's very easy to remember. Okay. And uh, milehigh2020.com uh, is the URL to get all the details. And so thank you so much. Um, And if you are enjoying the Mile High podcast, never miss an episode, make sure to hit subscribe so you always stay tuned to what's going on in tech. Thank you so much, Dr. Petra. Thank you. Bye.